Greetings from the Parsonage of St. Luke, United Church of Christ. <clears throat> Later this morning at 10.15 a.m., the worship service will be held in the church sanctuary. The service will be recorded and placed on the church's Facebook and YouTube pages and should be available mid-afternoon. This video contains the focus scripture lesson and the message for the day. The scripture lesson is from John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, <clears throat> and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because He was before me. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Bill called his parents to wish them a happy new year. His dad answered the phone. Well, Dad, what's your new year's resolution? Bill asked him. To make your mother as happy as I can all year, Dad answered. When Mom got on the phone, Bill said, what's your resolution, Mom? She answered, to see that your dad keeps his New, Year re New Year's resolution. <laughs> Welcome on this first Sunday of the New Year. Our topic for today is communication. An important topic in the family, in the workplace, even in the church, anytime during the year. Have you ever sent a message and wondered if it got through? Maybe you emailed a colleague and didn't hear back from them. Maybe talking to your kids is like talking to a brick wall. Real communication doesn't happen when a message is sent. Real communication happens when a message is sent and then that message is received in a timely and accurate manner. And I would add that really effective communication occurs when someone sends a message, someone else receives that message in a timely and accurate manner, and then acts on it. When a message results in action, that's effective communication. <clears throat> Georgia Sadler is a nurse in San Diego, California, and she was on a mission to raise awareness of diabetes and breast cancer rates among black women in her community. So Sadler began by setting up informational seminars in churches all over San Diego, but she could hardly get anyone to attend the seminars. Her message was so important. How could she get her community to receive it and act on it? Sadler, instead of setting up any more seminars, <clears throat> came up with the ingenious idea of training local hairdressers to talk to their clients about diabetes and breast cancer. Hairdressers are natural communicators. They hold positions of trust in women's lives. So Sadler ditched the informational seminar format and hired a storyteller to train the hairdressers in discussing health issues like diabetes and breast cancer with their clients. Rates of diabetes, testing, and mammograms rose significantly in the communities where Sadler trained hairdressers and her communication technique. When you really care about getting your message across, you have to be creative about it. Imagine how disappointing it is to send out an important message that never gets through. Let me give you a fascinating real-life example of that happening. On Valentine's Day, February 14, 2019, hundreds of thousands of text messages were sent out all over the United States and then disappeared. 
Notice that many of these lost messages were Valentines. They were never received until nine months later when those original text messages somehow began popping up in the recipient's phones. Imagine the confusion of the recipients. Some of the messages were from people who had since passed away or from lovers who had ended relationships. This massive example of miscommunication was finally traced to Cineverse, a company that provides networking services for many major cell phone carriers in the United States. A single server at Cineverse went offline on Valentine's Day, trapping hundreds of thousands of young sent text messages in, in its system. The server issue wasn't fixed until early November of 2019. And suddenly, all those unsent messages flooded into people's cell phones, creating all kinds of confusion and possibly some awkward conversations. Can you imagine out sending out an I love you, babe, or so glad I married you, or can't wait to celebrate Valentine's Day with you kind of message and, and not hearing back from the person you love? How many arguments and hurt feelings were caused by those missed messages that perhaps were delivered at a time that might have proved awkward? I think that those, about those late messages when I read our Bible passage for this morning. <clears throat> because these first few verses in John are meant to be a message of love, even if they start out somewhat confusing for us. John, first chapter, first verse reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Note that in writing the Word, John is talking about um, Jesus himself. Pastor John Piper puts it this way, he says, Jesus himself in his coming and working and teaching and dying and rising was the final and decisive message of God. Did you get that? Jesus himself is the final and decisive message of God. God sent us a message. But as we noted, real communication only happens when someone receives the message in a timely and accurate manner. And really effective communication only happens when the recipient receives an ax on the message. So what about you? Do you want to head into the, this new year with a message from God? Then these verses from John have some exciting things to tell us. Here's the first thing John tells us. When we look at Jesus, we see God's plan for our lives. From the beginning of time, God planned for us to be his children. We see it in verse 12 here. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Everyone who received Jesus as Lord gets adopted into God's family and into his love. Simon Hall, a chef in Knoxville, Tennessee, says his family and friends worried about him when he decided to adopt two sons in 2017. As he says, nobody can truly understand why I did what I have done, but I did it on faith. I did it on intuition. Hall, a single man with a successful catering company, was taking on a big responsibility when he adopted the two brothers from the county foster care system. And that responsibility grew even bigger when Hall discovered that his two new sons had four more siblings separated into various other foster homes in East Tennessee. Hall's budget and his schedule were already pretty tight, but his heart was full of love and compassion for these children. They were meant to be a family and if he was willing to make the sacrifice, they could be reunited. So Hall petitioned the court to adopt all six children in the family. As he says, in the end, I knew that this was what I was supposed to be doing, and I knew that they were supposed to be together. I just knew that they would heal in my home. Notice his heartfelt words, I just knew that they would heal in my home. From the beginning of creation, that was God's plan for us to adopt us into his family, where we could find healing in his home. Why would an eternal God create beings made in his image, breathe his own life into them, and then leave them to die? The answer is God didn't. God made us for eternal life. Before the creation of the world, God also worked to create for us abundant life. Here's the first thing John tells us. When we look at Jesus, we see God's plan for us. He planned to bring us into his home. Here's the second thing John tells us. When we look at Jesus, we see God's love for us. John chapter 1, verse 14 reads, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
Not just, I have come to visit you, but I have come to live with you. Instead of waiting for you to come to me, I'm coming to meet you right where you are. I think most of us start off the new year searching for something. Maybe we're searching for closure from this past year. Maybe we're searching for understanding or forgiveness. Some of us are searching for a second chance to get things right. Maybe some of you here this morning don't even know if you believe in God or if God believes in you. You want to believe that God is real, but you don't think you're good enough for him to notice you. In your mind, all these smiley, sincere, Bible-quoting people around you, God came for them. But you've got a lot of work to do on yourself before you can even think of asking for his attention. Well, friends, you've got it all wrong. This Bible passage makes it clear. God came to live in your neighborhood. God came looking for you. Janelle Perez is a nurse practitioner in Los Angeles. She could perform her duties in a nice hospital or a private clinic. Instead, she has spent years working among the homeless population on LA's streets. In 2011, she assembled a mobile medical team to provide medical care and housing for homeless veterans in LA. Janelle doesn't wear a nurse's uniform. She wears jeans and t-shirts and tennis shoes. She carries medical supplies in a battered backpack. Many of the homeless veterans she's trying to reach suffer from mental illness or addictions or post-traumatic stress disorder. So Janelle works hard to gain their trust. She brings along sandwiches. She sits and listens to the veterans' stories. It may take months of visits and conversations before a vet will let her take his blood pressure or give him some medicine. She tells of encountering a homeless Air Force veteran suffering from schizophrenia who had lived on the streets for 20 years. Janelle found him a safe place to live, but he still didn't trust her. He refused to use the electricity in his new apartment. He refused to let Janelle treat his schizophrenia with medication. To gain his trust, Janelle sat on the floor of his apartment each week and listened to him tell stories of his life. Week after week, this nurse practitioner sat on the floor of his apartment and just listened. Finally, she gained his trust. Today, this veteran's schizophrenia is controlled by medications. He's living independently in his own apartment. He has reconnected with his family. He has a brand new life because one woman came to him where he was and never gave up on healing him. John writes, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The eternal creator God put on our human flesh with its squishy, itchy, weak, and annoying imperfections and walked in our shoes. He experienced hunger and thirst and frustration and weakness and loneliness and overwhelming pain and loss. And he did it all so he could show us that we don't have to go searching for an unknowable God. God came looking for us. When we look at Jesus, we see God's plan for us and we see God's love for us. And finally, when we look at Jesus, we see God's gift to us. In Jesus, God poured out grace on us. He flooded this world with grace. What is grace? The word means loving kindness or merciful kindness. Verse 14 says that Jesus came to us full of grace and truth. Jesus came to show us the heart and character and the mind of God. And all those qualities were compressed into these two words, grace and truth. In December of 1772, an Anglican priest was preparing a sermon for the first Sunday of the new year. His text was 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 16 and 17. In this passage, Nathan the prophet tells King David that God has promised that David's descendants would always serve as the kings of Israel. Remember David's past? He was a humble shepherd boy when he was first chosen by God. In spite of his many sins, such as adultery and murder, God was committed to working through him. Talk about grace. I can't even imagine the awe and humility David felt when he heard God's promise. And in these verses, he responded, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my family that you have brought me thus far? The Anglican priest reading the story of David was a, a man named John Newton. He could relate to, to King David. Newton had been a violent slave trader. After he gave his life to Jesus, it still took him many years to awaken to the evils of the trade. 
Once he fully confronted his sins, however, he left the slave trade and wrote an influential pamphlet exposing the suffering aboard the slave ships. This pamphlet was distributed to every member of the British Parliament and helped influence the eventual outlawing of slavery in Great Britain. John Newton could never forget the burden of sin that was lifted from his shoulders by his Savior Jesus Christ. So imagine how King David's words sounded to John Newton that day. Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my family that you have brought me thus far? And with this rep repentance and gratitude fresh in his mind, Newton began writing the words to a hymn he would teach his congregation on that New Year's Sunday. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Most of us want to start off a new year with clarity. If there's one area of your life where I hope you have total and complete clarity, it's in your view of God. This is the one issue that will affect every other area of life. So it's essential that you understand who God is and what God's plans are for you. God has a plan for you, a plan to adopt you into his family and have a loving relationship with you. This is the good news. The eternal creator God wants a relationship with you. God loves you that much. And God has gifts of loving kindness and mercy and truth for all those who believe in and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Can you hear me now? God sent you a message. I hope you've received it. But the real test of effective communication is whether you act on it. Now that you've received God's message, will you choose to submit your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Until next week, be safe and may God bless you and yours.